Hello, hello. And welcome to the Iron Age Valheim weapon tier list. Well, this is going to include Swamp Overworld, Bone Mass, and the Mountains Overworld, up until the point where you get Silver. I've already done Sucking Crypts, I've already done Frost Caves, link in the description. So, let's start off. Iron Axe, yes, here it is again. Here we are again, D tier. Yeah, Iron Axe is just simply outclassed by just about everything. Uh, just honestly just never trade attack speed for a couple of extra damage per hit it's just going to not be that good especially because the speed is relevant enough where you will get less hits on a golden opportunity than an iron sword or a mace and it has no other extra utility, and it's just a even worse wood chopper than the regular battle axe at this point. So, uh, terrible, terrible weapon. Not good. Iron or er, ancient bark spear. Da -da -da -da. C tier. Yeah, it's a spear. It's still. Pretty, pretty meh in the overworld, especially now that we're up in the mountains, and that thing, when you throw it, it fly off the side of a mountain, or fly down the mountain, or get lost in between two big rocks, or the sides, you know, like, sides of a couple of mountains squeezed together, or like rocks squeezed together, or just a number of things. Yeah, you can just lose this thing doing the best move that it has to offer. Like, the thing is the throw. So, eh, it is a little bit better utility than the axe. But, whoa, is it outclassed. Mid-range, close range, all of it. Outclassed. Next we have the Abyssal Razor. Well, it's fast, I guess, and you can kill wolves kind of quickly, and Draugr kind of quickly, because you can just zoom around them. But in the swamps you're going to be wet all the time, so that's going to limit how much stamina you have and how often you can really maneuver around enemies and in the mountains I mean it's just good for what wolves and it's just outclassed in that in that way totally outclassed like there's nothing really too good to get a sneak up hit on uh, nothing too good at all so it's just kind of sad Next up, Iron Sword, B tier. Yeah, yeah, you know, this is your A-bomb slayer. Gonna kill your abominations for sure, for sure. Got decent damage, most reliable damage per hit, per opening. This thing in multiplayer is a beast. Middle mouse, space out your Draugr, Draugr Elite, smack wolves to death, although there's better weapons for it. But yeah, this is pure damage and no control, really, outside of the parry shield that you have it with. And ultimately, as it is just really specialized for uh, one, one target solo, it's kinda not that good. But 
hey, the multiplayer balances it out. So there you go. Battle X. Now we're getting into weapons that are very nice. Battle X is very underrated, and I think it will stay that way. Because technically what you could do is as soon as you get a good old iron pickaxe, take stag breaker or something up into the mountains, slam the ground, see if you find the too hard message, and boom, that's silver. And you can skip a lot of weapons on this list like that. Like you could skip iron sword for silver sword. Battle X for Crystal Battle X, which is what a lot of me and my friends do. You could even skip Abyssal Razor for Abyssal Harpoon. You can skip yourself the Ancient Bark Spear for the Fang Spear. So many skippables. And because of that, even though the axe has great utility versus Abominations, it's got control with that hyper-fast middle mouse poke, which can get a very very good stagger on many small or medium sized enemies a couple of pokes on an axe main will even stagger an a-bomb so there you go there's your a-bomb control your proactive a-bomb control of course you could also just with the good sprint speed uh, if you see an a-bomb get it get it uh, while it's just still in the ground, you go right up to it and get some good hits on it and stagger lock it. Very proactive, but it's uh, it's more difficult if you jump around the corner around a big ancient tree and boom, there's an A-bomb. It's like, oh no, you know, I just used so much stamina to get here and now there's an A-bomb waking up in my face. Still, not bad. You can parry it with the... The battle axe, uh, the battle axe is slow. It's got that slow wind up, but stagger is really high. The uh, middle mouse stagger is really good. The last hit of the pack chain, very nice for staggering as well. That's how you stagger lock the A bombs. Middle mouse poke on flat ground will do you very well versus wolves, although it is outclassed. And all these things considered, yeah, I think top of B tier is uh, pretty good. Uh, Iron Sledge. Uh, it's it's alright. In the overworld, it's just okay. So there's going to be a couple of situations where you'll see... Like, Mountain Ruins, Swamp Ruins, and it'll crush there. Like, absolutely demolish everything, no skill there. However... In the open scenarios, it's not as good. I mean, it's nice, let's say, you're on a, like a mountain rock and there's some A-bombs uh, coming, or not A-bombs, wolves coming your way, and you're like, oh no, they're gonna be all like weird pathfinding around these rocks. Like, okay, well, if they're above you, you can get some preliminary bonks and really destroy the wolves before they have any chance of getting to you. Uh, because of that, in the ruins alone, I'm going to put this at the bottom of B tier. So, we have top three options now. Hmm, which to start with? I guess I'll start with the... Iron Mace. Uh, oh man, it's tough. It's tough. It's like I want to like go and like put all these last three in like S tier, but that I don't know. Doesn't make much sense. Though, yeah, no, Iron Mace A tier. Uh, it's how you deal with bone mass. It's how you deal with blobs, oozers. How you deal with stone golems. It's pretty much mandatory. Because it's mandatory, I have to do it. I have to do it. Like a mandatory make and max. Like, it's still the best weapon. 
four stone golems. Uh, it's still the best versus your your oozers versus your blobs versus versus uh well actually not versus bone mass because you can go and make the frostner and then come back and absolutely wreck bone mass's face. And I think because of that, because you can jump ahead and it's like <laughs> you can go and make frostner, it's like ooh. Bump that I'm gonna bump that down right there. I'm gonna bump it down. It is a mandatory make, but again, it's got no control. It is just a bonk damage. Like you're just exploiting weaknesses. That's all you're doing. It's very bland otherwise, like just getting around weaknesses and resistances. That's it. No control. Knockback means combos aren't as good as the Iron Sword, but you kinda need it. So it's A tier. Top line. Iron Act gear. Yes, Iron Act gear. But everything's weak, but everything's resistant to pierce. No, it's not. You got, uh, Draugr. Draugr Elite. Draugr Archers. Your Star Draugr. Star Draugr Elite. All these are threats. Big, big threats for a while. What about the A-bombs and bone mass and blobs? Okay. You don't have to deal with those with the at gear. The at gear still shines, shines, shines so brightly in other cases. Especially versus wolves. And locks. Yeah. The at gear. Iron at gear. You bring all the way through. Even to the plains. It's like, we're going... Swamps domination on your basic mobs. Mountains domination on like basic mobs. The wolves. Even starred wolves. Middle mouse followed up with poke. Total control. That's a six times damage value stagger on that accu. That's gonna stagger just about everything. Looting a two star wolf. It is nuts. Your wolf pack? Find flat ground? Get your at gear ready, middle mouse, boom, no more pack. No? Followed up with some poke city on staggered wolves, no problem. You're being hunted? Okay. You're staying still on flat ground. Let the wolves come to you. Poke them or middle mouse, then poke. Simple, simple, simple. Go into the plains for the first time? Okay. Run in. Use the at gear. Kill yourself some locks. Make yourself a locks rug, extra comfort. Maybe make yourself a locks cape if you if you like that. Bru the the uh, iron at gear, kind of nuts. It's kind of nuts. Really good in multiplayer too. Great control, great support. Good backline. You can hit through like around people. Just combo to all day. Just combo all day, all night. It's it's crazy weapon. Multiplayer, single player. Yeah, it's it's domination. Every every single enemy that's like not resistant to pierce, it just pops off. It's like Ooh. There's still there's still quite a bit of those and they can be a real issue. And the fact that this makes those not an issue means it is ridiculously powerful. Alright, final option. Huntsman Bow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For a long time I was like, well why would I make this? I'm just gonna go right to the Draugr Fang. I'm just gonna get that extra damage. This weapon's useless. Why do they make this? Oh, how wrong I was. The Huntsman Bow has half aggro radius of every other bow. So this has four meters. Every other bow has eight meters. And you're like, oh, okay, well, what, what kind of difference does that make? Big, big difference. I'm talking, you got groups of enemies. Maybe there's a Draugr with an A-bomb just a little bit in the background. Snipe the Draugr, the A-bomb won't wake up. Incredible. Incredible. You got wolves, a couple of wolves. Snipe one wolf. The other one, if it's walking like five steps away, won't even notice the other one's dead. And then you snipe the other one. 
you got some groups of droggers. If they're standing a little bit away from each other, you snipe one and then snipe the other one. Won't notice you. You get four meters. I don't It could be even smaller than that. I don't know. It's like the distance uh, because your character is like... You don't really register how big uh, the scale of things are. Or at least I don't. I really, really underestimate, even now that I know, I really underestimate the four meters and how small that can be. Like, wow. Yeah, okay, that's really good. It's it's really good. Plus, of course, it's a ball. You're going to be shooting things from range. Drakes, no problem. Multiple drakes, no problem. It's, it's obscene. Like, uh, uh, leeches... No problem. And, uh, yeah. I should have mentioned this for uh, Mace and Sledge. The good versus Leeches. But so is the Huntsman bow. So, hey. There you go. It's it's good versus your Draugr. Draugr Elite. Star Draugr, Star Draugr Elite. Draugr Archer. Good versus Leeches. It's really good versus rates. It's, it's great. Uh, you know, you go even into the planes with this. Take off a, a, a lox when you're first getting that lox rug or that lox cape. You get one at a time, no problem. Easy aggro scenario. One at a time, take him out with the iron at gear. It's insane. It's in. Same. Very good. Also, well, I'll save that for uh, the Silver Age, but this thing, this thing, the, the, the Huntsman Bow, you, you can carry this to the end game because of its less aggro range, uh, less aggro radius than other bows feature. This thing is absurd. And if they don't release a quiet arrow or a future bow that has the same property or better, then this Huntsman bow will always, always be relevant. And I always keep one on me. Except when I'm going in like a, a dungeon. But yeah, overworld, always keep a Huntsman bow on your person. This weapon, they have to make something very specific for it to be outclassed. Pretty much all the others, all the other weapons in Valheim, are almost guaranteed to be outclassed in the future. This one, maybe not. There's a good chance that it won't be, and that it'll always be useful. And with that being said, it's got to be the top of S tier. Just for that utility alone. Well, I hope you guys appreciated. If I missed something, let me know. Next tier list video will be the Silver Age. So, Basic Mountains, Modair, Early Plains. And then some weapons that will be relevant in late planes I will talk about as well. So, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys some other time. Bye-bye!